what are, let's look at relationships and go, is there a need to have dopamine in long-term relationships or are serotonin and oxytocin enough? And not just relationships, that applies to career. It applies, applies to everything, I feel. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's a wonderful book about this written by a psychoanalyst in a slightly different context. The book, um, the title of the book is Can Love Last? And and it's an interesting book. It, it's, it operates on the premise that when we first meet somebody and we want, this is in the context of a romantic relationship and we desire a romantic relationship with them, it's very much about objectification of the other person. And I don't mean objectification in the traditional sense, but we don't rely on them yet. Yeah. Right. We only rely on the ability to pursue and get them right. Or for them to, for us to pursue them. However, or them to they, like or, us. Or, so. Exactly. Yeah. But we don't rely on them for safety at all. If that evolves to become a romantic relationship, right. With trust. Then what happens is there's a true dependency there. If one person were to leave for any reason, die or leave or cheat or break up, it is truly devastating to the safety mechanisms of the brain and body, right? It's a reactivation actually of a lot of the machinery that was designed for attachment between infant and parent, right? Is it just as an important aside, the, the all the work on attachment that was done by Bowlby and Maine and others in psychology of taking deliberately taking babies away from their mothers and then reuniting them and evaluating the responses, batching them into different, all that circuitry isn't lost as we grow up. It's repurposed for romantic attachment. Mm -hmm. There's no question Absolutely. about that. I no question more. about that. We yeah. just operate in the different domains of anxiety becomes about waiting for a text message as yeah. opposed to, you know, mother to come back in the room or, or, or nursing, et cetera. So same circuitry reapplied. As we advance into relationships, we become more dependent on people. But the idea, and that it's touched on quite a lot in this book, Can Love Last, is that there is a need from time to time in some relationships to bring the dopamine element back in. Now, certain cultures have actually built this in in a very strategic way of actually having men and women not physically contact one another for several weeks out of each month in order to maintain the kind of quote unquote excitement of a relationship. Wow. Nowadays, we tend to have this model of lover and best friend and sometimes even business partner, right? Literally. Which for some people can work and for other people can quash all the excitement, right? It really depends. And especially nowadays where people are working a lot more from home, there isn't a tendency for people to spend much time apart and to miss one another. Yeah. Missing one another, the yearning for the other person is a beautiful thing. Yeah. It's a painful but beautiful thing. What is that yearning? That yearning is the pain of the lack of dopamine and serotonin. I actually just came back from a, a trip and we were visiting a couple friends of ours and they said it was very beautiful. They said they've been together a long time. They said they've had three nights apart in their entire relationship. Wow. And one of them got sick during that time apart. And I thought, that's beautiful. Now, for some people, that's a beautiful model. For other people, that would be excessive and it actually could eliminate a, a number of the positive neurochemical features of the relationship. Yeah, And there's a lot of variation around this. So dopamine is required to quote unquote, re-up yeah. the excitement in a relationship. How is that achieved? Well, dopamine is the molecule, as you recall, of reward prediction error, of novelty. So doing things that are not expected is great. Routine is great for serotonin and oxytocin. Predictability, routine, predictability, same thing. Safety, routine, predictability. Serotonin, oxytocin system, no question about it. Dopamine is the neurochemical of novelty and pursuing new things. So for couples that are very set in their ways and feel very safe and homey together, wonderful, but creating ways in which they miss one another or creating new experiences for them to kind of re-up the dopamine in the relationship can have a, a tremendously positive effect. And I look forward to a day where neuroscience is actually incorporated into relationship design in an yeah. intelligent yes. and, and respectful way that they're respectful, meaning that there are differences. Yes. But we see a lot that people will just go out and get a new relationship, yeah. right? I'm of the mind that unless, you know, it's, there, it's a dangerous situation, better to probably avoid divorce, right? Yeah. Um, certainly for sake of children. Some t t I've heard, of course, that divorces can rescue relationships too. I understand there's a lot of nuance, but I think everyone would prefer emotionally, financially, et cetera, to be able to be in a great relationship for a long period of time. Yeah. And so I think that understanding the, the, the push-pull between dopamine and serotonin is key. And just to remember that missing someone, yearning for someone, is the anticipation of how great it's going to feel when together. Absolutely. I think that that could, that could go a long way. And also for people that get very, very, very excited <laughs> about the new person, the new thing, just be 
wary that not everyone's dopamine system works the same way. Yeah. And with dopamine, it's great to have increases in dopamine, but where it passes a threshold and it's very big peaks, where there's a peak, there's a crash and the crash is always asymmetrically deeper than the peak. There is no way around this. And so learn to temper the excitement yeah. if you're an excitable person. Yeah. And, uh, and I would say learn to ramp up the excitement a little bit if you're somebody who's not so easily overwhelmed. Yeah, definitely. I mean, me and my wife, we've been married for six years and nearly together for 10. Which you is seem not, to have an amazing, from the, ex, from the outside. Yeah, as in, I, I would say, I always like to clarify that I don't think, you know, I grew up wanting a Hollywood romance and I, my views of love were defined by movies and music and I realized that is not what love looks like yeah. at all. And my wife has been a great teacher to me in that space of showing me what a beautiful relationship can look like, but it doesn't look like how we think it is. And I think often when people see me and my wife, they may think we have that one version too. And I would just, I'm very careful about the idea that we have a fantastic relationship, but it isn't fantastic for the reasons that TV or movies has convinced us that relationships are good. But we spend around three months apart every single year, not by design or choice, just by work and life. And I haven't seen my wife for the last three months. So it will be one more month before I see her. So the yearning is real. I cannot wait to see her. <laughs> but at the same time, I get to focus on myself. I get to have alone time. I get to refill and refuel myself. I get to discover new parts of my identity. I get to learn a new skill. Like so many healthy... And of course, we don't have children yet. So we don't have that responsibility. Um, but but going to what you said, I, I see so much value in in how we can be open to these ideas. I think that's the point that it's not about there's one size fits all or one right way. 